that makes me want to, I'm just saying it makes me want to dance, but my family said I'm not allowed to dance. There's a lot of things that I'm okay at, but that is not one of them. I was born with no rhythm. I was born with two, three left feet. It's just bad. And so good morning. So glad to see you. So excited that you guys are here with us today. It's my honor to introduce a great friend of mine, our speaker today. He is, can I just say, I'm just, I'm, I am so excited for you guys to hear from my friend, Pastor Dean and Amy are pastors of Real Life Church in Sacramento. They're also on the lead team of the Reserve. If you don't know what the Reserve is, that is our restoration center in North Carolina where pastors and broken leaders come and they receive healing and restoration and are restored and released, not just back into ministry, but back into Christianity. We're trying to not put people back into the ministry. We're trying to make sure that people go to heaven. And so they're part of the lead team on that. And they're, they've made a significant financial and time investment into that and it's been a couple of years since I wanted him to come here and I had the opportunity to go to his church just a few months ago and can I say I have preached in lots of churches since COVID happened and I haven't been in another church that has more excitement that has more momentum that is more prophetic that has more expectation that made me want to say if I lived in this city I would come to this church and I'm so excited for you to hear from them and so listen though let me give you a little pre-warning when you go to real life in Sacramento those jokers ain't quiet they don't play they they say stuff like amen and preach it and go ahead pastor they might stand up on you is all I'm saying they might stand up and point basically as a church full of pastor Dallas's you know what I'm saying we're pastor Dallas like yes amen so let's let's just practice just for a minute can you guys say amen Oh, there we go. Somebody clap. Just say, oh, yeah, that's, that's so good. Say, say, do this one. Say, mmm. Say this one. You better shut up. That's when you know you're preaching, when they say you better shut up. So will you stand up on your feet in honor and welcome my friend, Pastor Dean Deguara. Thanks so much. Thank you guys so much. Good morning, Life Church Green Bay. So good to be with you. And uh, we absolutely love uh, Pastor Sean and Pastor Sonny's heart, uh, especially when it comes to ministering to hurting and broken leaders. Amen? Amen. And um, our hearts really resonate with that, so much so uh, that we're 100% behind uh, the Exchange Collaborative and the Reserve. And so uh, we came out here last November and uh, listened to some vision casting and Pastor Sean and Pastor Sonny share about that. And I went back to my church and I said, hey, this is what's happening. I want to get behind it. And so uh, our church actually pledged $25,000. And so we've been working real hard. <clears throat> We've been working real hard the last couple months to get that. And so today, we didn't quite get to the goal, but I wanted to bring what I had. We're going to give $21,000 to the Exchange Collaborative. And uh, we're so thankful for what God is doing. And we're expecting miraculous things to happen in people's lives and to see families restored. Speaking of family, uh, my wife and I actually came all the way to Green Bay to celebrate our 31st uh, wedding anniversary this week. This is my wife, Amy. Babe, will you stand for a moment? And uh, yeah, we got to go to Door County for the first time. I mean, we've seen goats on the roof, and I mean, you will not see that in California. They'll, they'll, they'll put you in jail for that kind of stuff out there, but, uh, but yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. We had a great, great time. And then uh, the rest of my family, um, my son, Josiah, and uh, his newly, uh, newly wedded wife, our new daughter-in-love, Ashton. Um, yes, they, are, they just got married. And yeah, there they are. And uh, just got married in March. And then my daughter here, Mariah, she's a, a registered nurse in uh, Sacramento. We're actually taking applications, any single men out there. Uh, we definitely believe in arranged marriage now that she's of age, and so. <clears throat> well, hey, today you can follow along on the Bible app or YouVersion app, uh, go to events, look for Life Church Green Bay, and all the notes will be right there. I really feel like the Lord put a word uh, in my heart specifically uh, for this house, and so I wanted to release that 
today. I believe that there was something special that we sensed in worship. Did anybody else sense that besides me? I believe God is building a culture of praise in this place where you will be actually looking more for the moments rather than the minutes. And this is a game changer right here. When we begin to look for the moments when God is moving and the Holy Spirit is moving, and we're not stuck necessarily to agenda or a service order, which we use at our church, but we're not tied to it, and that we'll be led and we'll go where God wants to go. And it doesn't have to be weird. Hello. How many know sons and daughters are led by the Spirit of God? That's Romans chapter 8. And so we just like to be led. And I believe there are times, listen, where you are going to pay attention more to the moments that God is creating here in this room rather than the minutes. And I feel like the Lord wants to set us free in that area. Not just life church, but the church in general. How many know after the last several years, come on, we need to be set free. Amen. I was getting ready to do some uh, consultation in Phoenix, Arizona, actually Anthem, a little suburb outside of that, and I had all my presentation set up. I was there a Friday, Saturday, was going to preach on Sunday, so I was getting ready for my message. I was over, uh, looking over my PowerPoint slides, and God changed my message. I hate when he does that, because that means I got a lot more work to do. You see, I was in the midst of my Bible reading plan. Anybody on a Bible reading plan on the U version? I mean, you're like, just three of you. All right. <laughs> you guys on the Bible reading, I mean, you're like reading the Bible, you know, you're, you're growing in your faith. And, you know, when, you're, when you start off the year, it's exciting, right? You, you open up Genesis chapter 1, 2, 3, but you get to, you know, the Genesis gene, genealogies and you're like, man, you're plowing, right? And then you think it's over, you get through, praise God, and then you get to the census of numbers, and you're going, God, can I just skim through this? But if you're like me, like you can't skip over that stuff or it doesn't count, right? You're disqualified. Like you got to read every word else it doesn't count. You can't check off the box. Then you get to the laws of Leviticus. And that's like a holy barbecue in there or something like that. But, and then I discovered, I got to the book of Joshua and I discovered what I call the Google Maps of the Bible. You've probably been there, uh, Joshua 18 and verse 12, for example, on the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan. Then the boundary goes up to the shoulder, north of Jericho, then up through the hill country, westward, and it ends at the wilderness of beth Avon. From there, the boundary passes along the southward in the direction of, how you know that stuff will put you to sleep right there. And, and I, I'm plowing, I'm, 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 I'm in Phoenix, and I'm plowing through the Google Maps of the Bible, and I get to Joshua 19.1, and I'm reading this Google Maps stuff, and I, I get to 19.1, and it says this, the second lot came out for Simeon, for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families, and their inheritance was within the inheritance of Judah. I highlighted that. I said, I've never read that before. And I went down to verse 9, Joshua 19, 9. It said, the inheritance of the children of Simeon was included in the share of the children of Judah. Everybody say, hmm. For the share of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore, the children of Simeon had their inheritance within the, within the inheritance of that people. Now, you guys, when I read this, when I read it once, I was like, hmm. When I read it a second time, I said, oh, my, this is my Mark Batterson moment. If you don't know who Mark Batterson is, like, this guy takes the most obscure Bible verses in the Bible or facts in church history, and, like, he creates best-selling books out of them. And I'm like, man, this is my Mark Batterson moment right here. I've never seen this before, and it caused me to do some deeper background research on the life of Simeon. You see, Simeon was the second son of Leah. Six sons, Leah had six sons, one daughter and one daughter. Every child was an effort to earn the love of Jacob 
She just wanted her husband to love her more than he loved Rachel. We see this in Genesis 29, 33. It says, then she conceived again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Simeon can be defined as I am unloved. It's probable, like his mother, that he spent his entire life trying to be loved and accepted. How many of you ever heard of generational curses? Have you been through, come on, the journey, uh, the, the journey track here? You know about those things. Trying to prove himself to his father Jacob and his brothers, but his very name tells us he was rejected and despised, as do the highlights of his life. We see this in Scripture. You see, Simeon was the kind of person that took things in his own hands. Unfortunately, that meant he took things out of God's hands. In Genesis chapter 34, when Simeon's sister Dinah was sexually assaulted, how many know that would get you upset? His sister Dinah was ex uh, sexually assaulted by a man named Shechem. And Simeon and his brother Levi, they took justice in their own hands. And they deceitfully persuaded Shechem and his father Amor to have all their men circumcised. And they used a holy ordinance of circumcision and covenant to express their vengeance and committed mass murder. It was an evil thing to do. And when Jacob heard about it, he was both angry and frightened. And Jacob, his father, never forgot it. Simeon was also the brother who could never catch a break. Anybody never catch a break before? In fact, you may remember when Jacob sent his sons to Egypt, he kept Benjamin home because he didn't totally trust his sons. He sent his sons to buy some grain from Joseph, who had been sold into Egyptian slavery, who, Jake, uh, who Isaac actually thought was, was, or Jacob actually thought was dead. And now he is been promoted to second in command of Egypt and he recognizes his brothers and he throws them all in prison for three days and then kept Simeon captive until they returned with their brother jo Benjamin. Now I could be reading into Simeon's life more than I should, but I believe the brothers came to this conclusion at that moment when Joseph kept Simeon. I bet you they were thinking this, well, our dad Jacob's going to be upset, but he's already mad at Simeon. So if we tell him he's in prison, he's going to be fine with it. Then in Genesis 49, Jacob gathers all of his 12 sons to bless them. And when he gets around to, uh, to Simeon, he speaks a word that sounds more like a curse than a blessing. Has anyone ever had a word spoken about them or over them that felt like it was more of a curse than a blessing? Come on, the person that you thought would bless you actually broke you with a word that you haven't been able to shake. And that's exactly how Simeon must have felt when his father Jacob blessed him. Look at this in Genesis 49, 5 through 7. I won't read all of it, but it says, Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments are cruelty Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Verse 7, cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's supposed to be a blessing. Thanks, Dad. And then lastly, we see the fulfillment of Jacob's blessing as the tribe of Simeon experiences this division and scattering of decrease that Jacob pronounced over him. In Numbers chapter 1, that census that I talked to you about in verse 23, it says about the tribe of Simeon, their numbered, their numbered men of the tribe of Simeon was 59,300. By the time you get to Numbers chapter 26, they've dwindled down to 22,000. You see, the tribe of Simeon was divided and scattered according to to the blessing of Jacob. The tribe of Simeon gradually dwindled in number and sank into a position of insignificance among other tribes. Even Moses pronounces a blessing on every tribe, but it passes by Simeon in silence. So if we summarize Simeon's life, we see a life that's overlooked, 
and unloved. Angry and frustrated with the relationship with his dad. Can't catch a break. Always getting the short end of the stick. Receives a blessing that seems more like a curse. And his life was spiraling downward. His life was diminishing and decimated. And I would say that there's some of us here today that can relate to the life of Simeon. You may be here this morning and you can't see God anywhere in your story. But today I've come from Sacramento to tell you God is not done writing your story this morning. Some of us are trying to prove ourselves. Some of us are trying to take things in our own hands. Other of us feel like we can't catch a break no matter what we do. Many of us have promises from God that we're overthinking and overanalyzing. And like Simeon, maybe a word has been spoken over your life and you've partnered with a lie of the enemy and you just can't seem to shake it. And that includes the lies that you're telling yourself. It seems as though everything you touch goes in the opposite direction and you find yourself decreasing into insignificance. Does anybody see me? Does anybody know who I am? And today I want to talk to you about strategic praise. And I want to encourage you and show you how praise can recenter your life on Christ who can turn your life and your circumstances around in a moment. In Joshua 13 through 19, the promised land is being allocated to the 12 tribes of Israel. And I'm not sure if your name has never not been on the list, but Simeon's name is not on the list. You know, I was, everybody thinks because my son is in the NFL that I was an incredible athlete. (laughs) Well, I was an average athlete. I was good enough to make the team. And I remember when I was a freshman, I remember trying out for the basketball team. I was going to make that. Ba- I was good enough to make that basketball team. And I remember going to tryouts and I was doing good. I was making the layups. I was making the jump shots. I was doing everything that I needed to do to make that team. And then they posted the list. You see, back in the 80s, they didn't care how you felt. They just put the list out. And I remember everybody gathered around and huddled around the list. And I went from the top to the bottom. And I went from the bottom to the top. And then I went back from the top to the bottom. And my name was not on the list. And just for the record, my name should have been on. I was better than Jason Jung. You know, I'm just saying. But listen, maybe you are here and you were overlooked for that raise or that promotion. Maybe the executor of your family will did you dirty. Maybe you thought you should have been invited, but no invitation came. Maybe you thought that you should have been on that BFF weekend trip, but you never got a call. You see, we all have a choice in this place. We can throw a pity party, or we can allow praise to point us back and recenter our lives back on Jesus. Back to our scripture today. The second lot came out for Simeon, for the tribe of the children of Simeon, according to their families. And their inheritance was within the inheritance of the children of Judah. Judah means now will I praise. In other words, without stepping into Judah, without stepping into praise, the tribe of Simeon was destined for insignificance. But when they stepped into Judah, when they stepped into praise, they found their inheritance. You see, the tribe of Simeon, they had to take time to reimagine. And maybe this morning, you need to just step back and reflect and reimagine your life in the presence of God. You see, they had to shift their mindset from I am loved, and they had to make a decision to now I will praise him. You see, when we step into praise, shift happens. Shift happens. Now, at my church, I would have you repeat it. Can we do that? Shift happens. Your mind can shift. Your circumstances can shift. Your perspective can shift. Your atmosphere can shift. Your life 
can shift. The tribe of Simeon appeared to be outside of the blessing, but listen, praise shifted them into Judah's abundance. You see, God will encounter our feelings of insignificance by revealing our inheritance within the boundaries of praise. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter into his gates, what? With thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Can we just do that for a moment? Can you just lift your hands? You might be down here, you might be right here, or you might be up here. But can you just thank God for what he's doing in your life? Can you thank God for the hard stuff, the difficult stuff? Come on, you being overlooked. Can you overlook the offense and can you just give God praise and invite his presence to come and invade your life in this moment? God, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you that you are in the room. God, we love you. God, we praise you in Jesus' name. You see, your significance will never be found outside of his presence. Listen, don't allow feelings of rejection or insignificance keep you on the outside looking in. Stop living your life like God doesn't care about you and allow praise to lead you into an abundant place in Christ. A while back, a friend of mine had texted me. She had just been laid off by the church, great church, that her father had founded. And she texted and she said, hey, we really want to stay in Sacramento. Is there anybody looking? This was in, like, this was in that time of, of the economy was, was, was a wreck, at least in California it was. <clears throat> And they were experiencing a decrease in their financial situation. They wanted to stay in Sacramento, but it never happened. They prayed it never happened. But then something changed, and they began to trust God and praise God for their future. And you know what happened? They were actually hired by an influential ministry up in northern California, about three hours north of Sacramento. And that call, you know what happened when they moved there? Her actually ministry flourished even more. And God has promoted them beyond anything they could have imagined. And they are in a better living situation, church situation, financial situation, ministry situation, and their family is thriving. Why did that happen? They didn't throw a pity party. Listen, they threw a praise party, and they opened themselves up to whatever God had. And now, if I told you her name, you would recognize that she's now a world-renowned speaker and best-selling author. Why? Because, listen, she didn't stand still in her pity. Listen, they opened their lives up to praise and said, God, refocus us, recenter us in your will. Like Simeon and like my friends, you must understand that praise is strategic in your life. And let me say this, in the life of this church, praise is strategic for where God is taking you, where God is leading you. Life Church Green Bay, praise is strategic. Praise is not the warm-up exercise before the sermon. (laughs) Praise is not limited to my music style of choice or my music preference. Come on, praise and worship is not the buffer so I can be 15 minutes late. (laughs) Praise is not the fast song. Praise isn't what gets you hyped up so you can make it through one of Pastor Sean's sermons. I'm just playing. Praise is not about our pleasure. It's about bringing him pleasure. There's something happens. Listen, the, the reason why I want to get, it, get, on, get at church on time is because I understand that God is seated on the praises of his people. Listen, that what God, what, what, listen, what takes some people, listen, 10 and 20 and 30 years, God could do in a 30-minute session where his people are just seeking him and encountering the power and the presence of God. This is how my life was changed. When I was 18 years old, my best friend, he got saved. He invited me to First Assembly of God in Fremont, California. And I walked in the youth group, which was experiencing revival. I didn't know what revival was, but that's what they told me. This group was experiencing revival. And I walked in, and I seen people at my school 
friends of mine, they had their hands lifted up. They were crying. They were singing Christian karaoke on a screen. And I just knew, listen, that there was something in the room. And I found out at the end of the night, it wasn't something in the room. It was someone in the room. And Jesus met me and he encountered me and he changed my life and he can change your life. Praise, listen, for Life Church Green Bay is strategic because where God is taking you, listen, it is a weapon. Yeah. Praise is a weapon. And today, together, we are stepping out of where we've been. And today, can I just challenge you to step into Judah? Step into praise today. Step into his presence today. Step into his power today. Step into his promises today. Step into his provision today. Step into his purposes today. Step into his plan today. Everybody say with me, now will I praise. Now will I praise. See, no matter how painful life is, it's not God, how will you do it? But God, I'm going to praise you through it. Secondly, I just want to encourage you, praise gives us access to the undeserved promises of God. The inheritance of the children of Simeon was included in the share of the children of Judah, for the share of the children of Judah, listen to this, was too much for them. I love this verse because ultimately it's a picture of what Jesus Christ has given us freely by grace through faith. You see, outside of Christ, there is no hope of an inheritance, but in Christ Jesus. Come on, the lion of the tribe of Judah. We have an inheritance. We have a share of his goodness. We have a share of his love. We have a share of his mercy. We have a share of his promise. We have a share of his undeserved favor. Again, the tribe of Simeon appeared to be outside the blessing, but praise brought them in to Judah's blessing. Without Christ, listen, there is no heaven on earth. There is no access to spiritual blessing breaking through my broken, busted up life. But stepping into praise and encountering God's presence and experiencing God through a personal relationship with him changes everything. And that's why we sing songs like, our God is the lion. <laughs> the lion of Judah. Because what? We're stepping in to Judah. He's roaring with power. He's fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before him. You see, through Judah, Simeon, who lived his whole life feeling like he was never enough, never thinking he was deserving of love, he encountered a God of more than enough. Everybody say, more than enough. More than enough. You see, Simeon was included in the share of the children of Judah. That's a picture of grace, my friends. Simeon didn't deserve it. He did everything he could do to disqualify himself from an inheritance in the promised land. But God made it happen, and he will make it happen for you. You see, praise didn't minimize Simeon's mountains. Come on. It magnified the God who moved the mountain. Zechariah 4, 7 says, who are you, O great mountain? We sing a song at our church. It's, who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone amid the shouts of grace, grace. Too. Can you just say grace, grace? Listen, Judah's too much was more than enough for Simeon. In fact, I love this, the tribe of Simeon, when they stepped into Judah, the inheritance, listen, they inherited 14 cities and 1,000 square miles. Now, when I read that, how many of you could use a little bit of someone's too much? The good news is in Christ Jesus, you have everything you need because Jesus gave all he had to give. And that's the thing about praise. It points us to Jesus. It creates a place for us. When we step into praise, listen, we step into our place. When we step into praise, everything falls into place. And when we step into praise, listen, we find our place. You see, the Lord has brought you at Life Church because what lies ahead for Life Church Green Bay is too much. Everybody say, too much. One commentary I read said, what Judah received was too much for them to handle, more than they needed. 
And when I read that, I thought to myself, I've always heard God never gives you more than you can handle because he calls people alongside of you that can help you get a handle on it. See, a lot of people think they have to do their own thing to find their inheritance and fulfill their destiny. But Simeon found his destiny within the borders of Judah. Could it be, listen, come on, we're, we're in this whole individualistic Christianity thing. Could it be, listen, that God brought you here to be a part of the vision here? Come on, God, that God could launch you here? Simeon discovered his destiny when he partnered with praise. Psalm 16, verse 6, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. Yes, I have a good inheritance. And my last point is this, praise invites us from the back of the line to the front lines. And I sense that God is extending an invitation to you as a tribe to level up your praise. I was so excited because when I was in the room in the back, I was looking at your announcements, and on August 30th, you're having a worship night. Can I just tell you, listen, the, 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 Pastor, I know Pastor Sean and Pastor Sonny and, and the team here, listen, they're not just adding something on the menu so that you can say, oh, that might be a good thing to go to. No, no, I believe that night is actually going to be the most important night in the life of this church going forward. I really believe that. Two years ago, we started what we call, it's the same type of thing, we call it glory night. It's an hour of praise. I got the idea literally from a church that was a, that's just experiencing amazing things just about 45 minutes away from us. I took our whole team down there to their night. They call it their pursuit night. I said, I can't copy them, so I'll just do the same thing, but I'll call it glory night. And so once a, they do it every week, I just said, man, I can't, I, I, we're not there yet, but we're going to do it once a month. We started doing it once a month, and things started to shift in our church. I'm, I'm talking provision started to shift. Numerically, listen, since Pastor Sean has been at our church in February, every Sunday we've seen salvations. It's been amazing. Every Sunday we've seen people getting saved. We've went from two services to three services in the middle of the summer. Praise invites us from the back of the line to the front line. You see, God is inviting you to level up your praise, to realize, listen, that we're just not singing. We're not just singing songs on a screen. <laughs> we're actually fighting for something. We're actually contending for something. Look at Judges 1, 1 to 4, and I promise I'm done. It says, after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who's going to rise up first and go up for us against the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up against them. Indeed, I have delivered the land into, the, into his hand. Now, historically, if you didn't know, the tribe of Judah always was the first tribe to lead the way. Praise, come on, always leads the way. Listen, when they camped and they broke camp in the wilderness, Judah rose up first, they packed up, and they headed out because praise always has to lead the way. When they went to battle, guess who went out first? Praise rose up and went out first. God is about to make praise a huge priority in your life and in the life of this church. Look at verse 3. So Judah said to Simeon, his brother, come up with me to my allotted territory that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. This is unprecedented. Judah always went by themselves, but in this passage right here, listen, they say, hey, wait a minute, let's ask Simeon now to go from the back of line to the front lines with us. And Simeon went with him. Listen, you've got to go where God is calling you to go. Listen, you cannot sit back. You cannot wait for a better time. Now is the time to go to the front line. Then Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the ites, all the ites, into their hand, and they killed 10,000 men at Bazek. Can I take the pressure off of your life this morning? You don't always choose your tribe. Sometimes your tribe chooses you. 
Helen Keller said this, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. I love this verse right here, this, this part in the passage there, it says, and I will likewise go with you to your allotted territory. In other words, Simeon, you come with us and fight this battle, and then we're going back to your territory, and we're going to do the same thing. Life Church Green Bay, you fight a lot of battles for others, but don't lose sight of praise and the people that God sends you to help you fight your battles. In fact, I believe as you prior, prioritize praise, God is going to send, come on, people. The tribe of Simeon goes from forgotten to first. And this morning, listen, I'm here to say, you haven't been forgotten. You've been strategically placed. If you were to actually stand back, I wish I <clears throat> would have had a picture of this. I should have had a picture of this. But if you see where Simeon was placed in Judah, it was actually right in the center. Simeon is right in the center, and Judah is all around them. Despite their relative insignificance as a tribe, a contingent of Simeonites in David's army was given honorable mention. First Chronicles 12, 25, and I'm closing with this. It says, the sons of Simeon, mighty men of valor, fit for war, 7,100. Do you see that? 7,100. That's encouraging to me that God can take a messed up, mistake-ridden misfit like Simeon and by simply stepping into praise, make him fit for war. And this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you need a shift in your life. Maybe you need to encounter the grace of God, the undeserved grace of God. Maybe you need to know that God sees and cares enough about you that he's inviting you to step out of your feelings of insignificance and into his presence where you will find his promise, his plan, and his purpose for your life. Is there anybody in the room? You say, Pastor Dean, listen, I need to find, yes, thank you for being so bold. I need to find my life, purpose, and his plan. I'm away from God. I don't know Jesus, and I need to accept him into my life. Is there anybody in the building that would say, Pastor Dean, will you include me in that prayer? Anybody except this? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Several hands. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can we pray this prayer together? I just want to honor the Lord in this moment. Amen. Will you guys repeat after me as I get there? Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross to rescue me from sin, to restore me to the Father. I choose now to turn from my sins, my self-centeredness, and every part of my life that does not please you. I choose you. I give myself to you. I receive your forgiveness and ask you to take your rightful place in my life as my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. As we journey through life, we all have opportunities to be generous. Because you are generous with your time, talent, and resources, together we can be generous by creating engaging in-person experiences, live online services, and fresh virtual resources so that thousands of people on the 920 and beyond can experience the life-changing message of Jesus every single week. Your tithe and above and beyond giving of any amount make it possible to create above and beyond experiences that point to the generosity of God. Online giving is safe, simple, and secure. Reoccurring giving makes it even easier. Together, let's be generous.